Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with the new Ghost Recon Breakpoint beta. If you enjoy this video, please persuade Elon Musk to send a pelican to Mars first before a human, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. Look at my boy drinking fresh water from his canteen, staying happy and hydrated. Well how did I get here? For that, we need to go all the way back to the beginning. This is the story of how I drank your mother, I mean drank some water. Well I load into Breakpoint and moments later find myself in a helicopter flying towards an island known as Arawa. Aurora? Aurora ra ra? Wow I'm genuinely dyslexic, let's move on. A private company has occupied this island, is developing specialist military equipment, has turned against the rest of the world, and worst of all they have a bunch of outstanding parking tickets so my team of elite specialist operatives is going in to destroy them. I get to design my character and I opt for a bald guy with a big bushy beard because everyone knows if you have a big bushy beard no one notices that you're bald. It doesn't go too well though as our helicopters are destroyed before we even reach land. I watch on as the last heli falls and I didn't know this game was set in Australia, how fun. I then realise it's not, I was just hanging upside down in a tree but I guess I'm lucky to be alive. There's this guy lying next to me and I'm like bro are you pretending to be dead? Because if you are that's actually a really f***ed up joke given our current circumstances like I'm pretty sure most of our friends just burned alive. It turns out he's actually dead though which is a huge relief as I don't think I could have kept hanging out with someone who misjudges humour that badly. As I have no real respect for the dead, I proceed to take his gun and the cash out of his wallet and move out. I'm limping around pretty badly and I can't help but feel like my guy here is being a little bit of a baby. It was just a cute little helicopter crash and frankly I don't care how much internal bleeding you have, stop lying in the mud, then punch yourself in the dick and let's go. For real though, I do bandage up the wounds and I best get some antibiotics ASAP as I'm pretty sure I just caught like 55 different tropical infections. So my current current mission is to investigate the helicopter crashes and look for survivors. Two guards on patrol cruise past and I decide to be the pacifist and just sneak by behind them. Nah just kidding, obviously I shoot them both in the head as here at Modest Pelican Gaming we don't negotiate with terrorists. It turns out you can pick the bodies up in this game and throw them so I proceed to do this as it's a great core workout. Pro tip, throwing dead bodies around is the fastest way to get a six pack so if you aren't a member of a gym, just kill someone. I approach the next helicopter site and there's no way anyone survived that. It's not all bad news though as I do find an assault rifle in a box. There's always a silver lining even during seemingly horrific moments. I find another one of my comrades lying down and I swear to god this playing dead practical joke just isn't funny anymore, we're in the middle of a bloody war zone right now. It turns out he too is actually dead though which again brings me a lot of comfort knowing my friends wouldn't play a mean prank like that on me. As I advance I am somehow spotted by who I can only assume is a Where's Wally enthusiast and I find myself in a firefight. These are the moments that separate the men from the boys, the women from the girls, the non-binary alphas from the non-binary betas. I manage to take down the two enemies and one of them even has this sweet helmet which will not only assist me during combat but it'll be great for protecting my head back home when I'm attempting six stunts on my Razor scooter. Time to find the last crashed chopper. Man the sun shining through those trees looks pretty beautiful and see again, it's all about just finding that silver lining. On one hand yes, it seems like all my friends are dead, but on the other hand, nature is dope. Anyway, these guys who shot down our chopper seem pretty messed up because they have graffitied on the side of a bunker, we are summoning the devil. Wow, really not a very welcoming group are they? Satanism gives off super hostile vibes. I don't want to risk a loud gunfight again, so I decide to keep things quiet this time as I am quickly learning that stealth is a pretty good option. Call me Papa Shroud because I dispose of these two devil worshippers with precision and speed. I mean yes, that was against two completely oblivious NPCs and shroud tears through actual players but still, we are clearly at about the same skill level. Also yeah, I decide to throw all the bodies into the fire. They call me the marshmallow roaster. Actually no, scrap that, that's not very intimidating at all. They call me general herpes because I burn. Wow that's literally worse. I approach the last helicopter crash site and a cutscene triggers. Thank god some of my squad mates actually survived, this is a huge relief. 
Psych, they all get gunned down in seconds, it's truly brutal to watch. In an attempt to keep being optimistic, at least I know that this definitely isn't an epic prank. Those helpless puppies are absolutely dead, may they rest in peace. The game warns me that the enemies who just massacred the boys 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 are of a high level, but I'm all about that improvise, adapt, overcome mantra, and so I open fire, and for a second there I have the upper hand. For like the briefest of seconds, as then I proceed to get gunned down by a bunch of level 150 neckbeards. I respawn and shake it off, as I need to reach Twin Falls Mountain, which is a safe haven for, I guess, angry dudes with beards. I go back to keeping a low profile, utilizing my combat knife to stab enemies. Like 37 times, I think he died after the first stab, chill out OJ. I stealth past a patrol and get ready to steal one of their vehicles so I can finally escape the area. As I enter the Jeep, I see the patrol and the temptation is just too damn much for me. Now was this a smart play? No. But was this a fearless play? Yes it was, and plus I always get in so much trouble when I run people over in real life, so it's actually very therapeutic for me to do it in a controlled environment. I gotta say though, didn't see the train coming and I get completely wiped out before eventually dying, so yeah, fun fact. The train tracks aren't for aesthetics, there are actual trains. Eventually I do the mature thing and drive towards Twin Falls so I can hopefully party up with some other players. I arrive at the cave entrance and there is a super sneaky camouflage system, I like it. I am greeted by two figures who proceed to shine a torch in my face which is kind of rude, but it turns out they are just the lovely Asian couple who own the mini mart a few blocks down. I'm not sure what they're doing on this island, but I appreciate them stocking Powerade in their store which has been great for combating the occasional hangover. So here I am in this hub for players. Let's call it the Player Hub or P-Hub for short. It's pretty cool, it's got a water windmill which I highly rate, but it's time to find some fellow ghosts and roll out. I'm matched with Steezy McGee 7 and Jelly Dragon 18. Well the only dragon going on here is me dragging these nuts across the face of terrorism. I've actually used that dragon joke before, and it's not even my joke, so I hope you all appreciate the original content. We pile into a chopper and roll out on a mission to destroy a drone as we take in the huge island that is Arawa. Aurora, you know what, f it, let's just call it Jurassic Park. We put the bird down and head towards the drone's last known location. Steezy McGee 7 starts giving us orders, so I guess he's self-appointed team leader. Wow, rest in peace democracy. No, in seriousness, these guys were both legends, but we decided to play all tactically. We locate the drone that is inexplicitly unguarded and like I don't know who the senior manager is for these terrorists, but you might want to get a few people with AK-47s and balaclavas to stand watch or something. Steezy McGee 7 tells us to get down quickly so we all hit the deck and hide as an enemy drone patrols overhead. He tells us that if one ever spots us, a swarm of high level enemies and drones will immediately collapse on our position. Spoiler alert, one does actually end up spotting us later on. Before destroying the drone and giving away our position, we decide to clear out some enemies. It was genuinely cool to squad up with two random dudes from America and play so tactically. We actually chose targets and counted down to synchronize our shots. If I could be half as organized in real life as I was in this game, I probably wouldn't have a crippling heroin addiction. One of the enemies also has these ghillie suit pants, which I obviously steal, but I don't have the rest of the ghillie suit so I sort of just look like I'm about to do a tribal dance or something, which I guess is sweet. Anyway, we go back and destroy the drone for the GG mission complete with no casualties. Well, I mean, I might book a chiropractor appointment as my back is pretty sore from carrying my teammates, but apart from that, all good. Nah, I can't do them dirty like that. It was definitely a team effort. We carry on doing missions and I sometimes shoot enemies, but I'm not going to lie, I also shoot a few civilians. There didn't seem to be any consequences, which only encourages me. The boys and I continue getting stuff done and just to generally exploring the map. Our process seemed to be that we'd attempt to scout out the area with drones, dare I say, we ghost reconned, and then we'd do our best to tactically take down enemies without being noticed, which would last about one minute before everything went balls up and we ended up in a massive shootout. It was good fun though, as I'm not scared of an all out firefight, but I'll tell you who's even less scared, this worker eating an apple like nothing just went down. Mate, I just fired a rocket launcher like 30 seconds ago. Watch, you hear explosions and decide now's a good time to eat fruit? I attempt to shoot his apple to teach him a lesson, but accidentally 
shoot him in the foot, which kills him, so please type F to show respect for Snacky McSnackface. A while later, we find ourselves in some thick jungle, and it almost gives me PTSD from my time in Vietnam. Except then I'm all good because I remember I didn't actually fight in Nam. Unfortunately, a drone catches us in the open and we do our best to hide, but there isn't enough vegetation and we are spotted. I'm sure I don't need to tell you that this is far from an ideal situation. The soundtrack gets intense, our map goes completely dark and we are pushed by loads of high level soldiers and drones. We do our best to fight, but are no match for these hackers and decide our best option is to retreat. I sustain some pretty serious injuries and start limping again. Well, he's either limping or pretending to be a horse and trotting around but that would make no sense, so I guess my guy is pretty badly injured. I manage to escape into a bunker, but our fearless dictatorial leader, Steezy McGee, goes down. Now I don't leave a man behind, so I decide to push the swarm of enemies. No one dies on my watch. Well, except literally every single person we originally flew to the island with, but besides them, no one dies on my watch. Steezy tells me that he only has 20 seconds left, so I run out into the open and am predictably gunned down. A pretty awful moment, but there is again a silver lining. Steezy tells me that with his last dying breaths before he dies, that if I am on low stamina, I should drink water. I double take as I was not aware you could drink water in this game. I now rate this game 11 out of 10. So I say goodbye to the legends and go on a new quest, a quest to drink water. So to drink water, I need a canteen and I look far and wide. Many enemies were slain as I searched for the elusive canteen. I find everything but a canteen though. I find a beige combat vest. Hell, I even find a pair of beige chinos, which I mean look great with boat shoes, but are currently a highly inappropriate choice of attire. After searching for what seemed like hours, I find a canteen. I take it down to a lake and fill it up with God's nectar. And then lads and lasses, I drink water and hydrate myself. What a moment. Sure, we destroyed a few drones and rescued a few hostages, but I think we can all agree that the real victory royale here is sipping Poseidon's tears. I like how this whole staying hydrated thing started as a meme, briefly became sort of a dead meme, but is now basically the backbone of my channel. Anyway, thanks for watching you absolute legends, and a massive thank you to my patrons for generously supporting the channel. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.